Trade. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. I welcome our dear brothers and sisters in al-Islam. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Bithillahi ta'ala, we continue our reading through Bidayatul Hidayah by Imam Ghazali rahimahullah. Bithillahi ta'ala, in this majlis, we will insha'Allah complete the text. We will begin the third part of the book, walhamdulillah. As was mentioned, Imam Ghazali, he has divided this text into three sections. So the first one was dealing with the matters of ta'at, the matters of obedience to Allah. The second part, dealing with matters of ma'asi, the sins. And in our previous majlis, we dealt with the sins of the heart. Imam Ghazali stressed what? Three sins he stressed. Number one, the matter of hasad. Number two, riya, showing off. And number three, ujub and kibr, where ana, 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 I am the one. I did this, I did that, etc. You think that you are better than all of the other people. Allah musta'in. Now, the third section, and that is, as is stated here, the etiquette of companionship with Allah and the creation. So, this is the third section, there's about 12 pages, and inshallah, we will complete it in this majlis. And so, without any further ado, we say, Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. So Imam Ghazali rahimahullah states, I'lam anna sahibaka alladhi la yufariquka fi hadarik wa safarik wa nomik wa yaqazak wa yaqazatik bal fi hayatik wa mawtik huwa rabbuka wa mawlak wa sayyiduk wa khaliquk. Know that your companion, the one who never ever departs from you, whether you are at home or whether you are traveling, whether you are asleep or whether you are awake, and indeed in your life and at your death is none other than your Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your protector, your master, and your creator. Whenever you engage in the remembrance of Allah, Allah is with you. As Allah the Most High states, I am the companion of the one who engages in remembrance of me. And whenever your heart breaks with sorrow over the shortcomings, over your own shortcomings in fulfilling the rights of Allah, indeed Allah is your friend and constant companion. As your Lord the Most High, he says, Jayid, I am with those whose hearts are broken for my sake. If you knew Allah truly as he should be known, you would take Allah as your companion and leave the people aside. If you are not able to do this all the time, then beware of leaving your entire night and day devoid of a time spent alone with your master. If you are unable to do this all the time, then don't leave off at least some time of the day or the night that you are like in khalwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِيَّاكَ أَن تُخَلِّي لَيْلَكْ وَنَهَارَكْ عَنْ وَقْتٍ تَخْلُوا فِيهِ بِمَوْلَاكْ وَتَلَذَّذُ and that uh, you taste the sweetness of intimate dialogue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this, you must learn the manners of companionship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mighty and the majestic. And so, for example, a time every day that it's just you and Allah, whether it be the time of the hajjud, which is the best time, Jayid, or between the Adhan and the Iqama, or at the end of the day, between Salatul Maghrib and Salatul Isha after Asr, sometime, five, ten minutes a day, Jayid. And then he mentions, Wa and its Adab, the manners of this company are keeping the eyes downcast, lowering your gaze, full concentration, remaining silent, stillness of the limbs. So you're performing salah, for example, not shaking and moving the hands and this and that, etc. Left, right and center. Hastening to fulfill Allah's commands. Avoiding the prohibited matters. Minimal objection. Minimal objection to what Allah decrees for you. You accept what Allah has decreed for you. Constant remembrance of Allah. Preserving, persevering in contemplation. Giving preference to the truth by turning over all else. 
despairing of the created beings, not turning to the creation, right? But turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humility with extreme reverence before Allah's majesty. A feeling of brokenness before Allah, coupled with modesty, peace of mind, without resorting to any strategy for earning livelihood, right? Was sukoon, wal khudu'u tahta al hibati, wal inkisar tahta al haya, was sukoonu an hiya was sukoonu an. هي للكسب هي للكسب ثقة بالضمان that you don't resort to like strategies you don't resort to حيل 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 are like loopholes right والتوكل على فضل الله عز وجل معرفة بحسن الاختيار وهذا كله ينبغي أن يكون شعارك في جميع ليلك ونهار ونهارك فإنه أدب الصحبة مع صاحب لا يفارقك والخلق كلهم يفارقونك في بعض أوقاتك جيد famous statement of Imam Shafi'i that uh, even in the shade your own your own shadow will leave you جيد even your shadow when it's shady your shadow will leave you جيد so Imam Ghazali here he states that have complete trust in the grace of Allah mighty and majestic knowing with certainty that the best choice will always be the one that Allah makes these etiquettes all of them should constitute your distinguishing emblem in your day and in your night they are the spiritual courtesies of companionship with a friend who never leaves your side even as one of the creation will part company with you at one time or another. Everyone in this dunya, they will part. They will part with you, Jayid. Whether it be your wife, your child, your kid, whoever it might be, there will come a time that you will part. You will separate from them, Jayid. Until death do we part. How many a husband and wife, they said those words. And a few months down the line, they've separated. They, they've ended up in divorce. Allah musta'an, Jayid. And so, even your shadow leaves you in the shade. And then he talks about adab al-alim, the etiquettes of the scholar. فَإِنْ كُنْتَ عَالِمًا فَأَدَبُ الْعَالِمْ سَعَةُ الْإِحْتِمَالِ وَلُزُومِ الْحِلْمِ وَالْجُلُوسِ بِالْهَيْئَةِ عَلَى سَمْتِ الْوَقَارِ مَعَ النَّاسِ وَتَرْكُ التَّكَبُّرْ عَلَى جَمِيعِ الْعِبَادِ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّلَمَةِ if you are a scholar, then the manners of a scholar that you must have are ample tolerance, keeping to forbearance, gravity and having a dignified bearing when you are in the company of the people, refraining from showing haughtiness towards any of the creation, any of the slaves of Allah. Don't show off in front of them, etc. Except for tyrants. So Imam Ghazali says, except for the tyrants, the tughat, etc. In front of them, you know, you show your power and your uh, your presence as a deterrent to their oppressive behavior. Preferring a lowly status in gatherings and meetings. You should prefer a lowly status in gatherings and meetings. Avoidance of jesting and making jokes. Gentleness with the student. Showing patience with the student or the questioner who is haughty. So you have sabr with the questioner who is haughty. Jayid. Warifku bil mutaallim. وَالتَّأَنِّي بِالْمُتَعَجْرِفْ وَإِسْلَاحُ الْبَلِيدِ بِحُسْنِ الْإِرْشَادِ And uh, you try to correct uh, the Balid. Balid is the, Balid is the, 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 the idiot. Balid is the dull-witted right? with excellent guidance. So you are, you are soft with them and not becoming annoyed with them not to be too proud to say, you must not be proud to say, I don't know. Devouting all your full attention to the questioner and genuinely attempting to understand his question. Not cutting them off while they're still talking, etc. While they're still asking the question, you're already giving the answer, etc. Fully accepting another person's proof in a debate. Submitting to the truth and returning to it when you realize that you are wrong. Preventing the student from learning any branch of knowledge that will harm him. Right? Like medicine, don't give the student that which will harm that student. Anything other uh, than uh, deterring the student from desiring it uh, in his uh, pursuit of useful knowledge. Anything other than uh, the countenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and preventing the student from occupying himself with communal obligations before he has completed his individual obligations. So you should guide the student. Student wants to learn all of these fancy matters, but he hasn't sorted out the basics. He hasn't understood. He hasn't learned the uh, fard obligations upon him, and he's worried about the fard kifaya matters. Right? So you prevent him from following the wrong path. Because his primary individual obligation is to rectify his outward and his inward with consciousness of Allah, taking account of himself first so that uh, the student may follow him in actions first, benefiting from his example and uh, benefit from his words second. So he states here, قبل الفراغ من فرض العين وفرض عينه إصلاح ظاهره وباطنه بالتقوى ومؤاخذته نفسه أولا بالتقوى ليقتدي المتعلم أولا بأعماله ليقتدي المتعلم أولا بأعماله ويستفيد ثانيا من أقواله that the student will learn from the actions of the teacher uh, first and then from the statements of the teacher, second. The etiquette of the student, adab al-muta'allim. If you are a student, then the manners of a student with the teacher are to first greet and offer the salutation of peace, not to speak too much in his presence, not to speak unless asked something by the teacher, not to ask questions without first seeking permission, not to say in contradiction to what he has said. So and so, mentioning another scholar's name, but he said X, Y, and Z, and you are saying X, Y, and Z, O oh Sheikh. Try it. Uh, not to point out something contrary to his opinion, thinking himself, thinking that you, you're the student, that you are more learned than the teacher. Jaid, uh, not to whisper to another student in his gathering, not to look around, but rather to sit with good manners, eyes downcast, as though in ritual prayer, not to burden him with questions when you see that the teacher is tired or weary. Not to, uh, and, and you should stand when he stands out of respect, not to follow him from the gathering not to follow him from the gathering, uh, talking to him and asking him questions, uh, not to ask him questions on the way to his house uh, until he reaches there uh, and grants uh, permission. ولا يلتفت إلى فيرى أنه أعلم بالصواب جيد ولا يلتفت إلى جوانب بل يجلس متأدبا مطرقا كأنه في الصلاة ولا يكثر عليه عند ملا عند ملاله وإذا قام قام له don't follow him asking him questions, etc. Right? Unless that's fine, unless it's okay. ولا يسأل ولا يسأله في طريقه إلى أن يبلغ منزله. Don't continue asking him questions until the sheikh enters into his house. ولا يسي الظن به في أفعال ظاهرها منكرة عنده. Jayid, and uh, do not form a bad opinion of the Sheikh regarding actions that appear outwardly to be blameworthy, for he knows better about his own personal affairs. And if you see something like that, then you should remember the story with regards to Musa السلام, and Khidr. And so if you see something from the Sheikh, etc., that seems off, uh, don't uh, make inkar of him and don't think bad of him, etc. And Imam Ghazali mentions like Musa alayhi salam in Khidr. Musa alayhi salam felt that what Khidr was doing was wrong, but in reality it was correct. Outwardly it seemed incorrect, but the reality was that it was correct. So Imam Ghazali states that basically you should make an excuse for the for the teacher. Obviously, these matters here, there are limits and the balance is the right way. Doesn't mean now, subhanAllah, that for example, uh, you know, you be like, as some have mentioned, that you are like uh, a dead body in front of the sheikh and then he turns you as he wishes, etc. Jayid, you just are sami'na wa ata'na. That uh, creates a cult following. That creates a cult following, Jayid. Uh, Everyone's statement is taken and rejected, except the one who is in that grave, as Imam Malik, rahimahullah, has stated. Adab uh, al-walad, 
ma'al walidain, the etiquette of the child with his parents. If you have parents who are still alive, then the manners of the child with the parents are to listen to what they say, to stand when they stand out of respect, to submit to doing what they say, not to walk ahead of them, not to raise your voice over theirs, to answer them when they call you, to be intent upon seeking their good pleasure, to lower to them the wings of humility, lower yourself out of humility before them, not to remind them of your goodness towards them. I did this and I did that to you, etc. Uh, know of the fact that uh, you are taking care of their affairs for them. Allah Not to look at them, uh, not to look at them askance, right? What does that mean? Uh, وَلَا يَنظُرُ إِلَيْهِمَا شَزْرًا وَلَا يُقَطِّبَ وَجْهَهُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمَا Not to frown to their faces. To their faces. وَلَا يُسَافِرْ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِمَا You don't travel except with their permission. Know that after the categories above, the rest of the people who have relations with you, they fall into three categories. Friends, acquaintances and the people you do not know right? so imam ghazali he spoke about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he spoke about the alim the student of knowledge and then your etiquettes with your with your parents after this it's your friends your brothers etc in islam your friends your acquaintances and people that you do not know so number one al majhulin so he talks about the people you don't know first al majhulin People that you don't know. When you are tested with people that uh, do not know, uh, you don't know of the general public, the etiquette of sitting with them entails that you don't get too involved in their conversations or discussions. You don't pay too much attention to their uh, this uh, quietening talk, uh, disregarding what follows on from the bad things that they say, that you be wary of meeting with them too often or getting into a position where you are in need of them and calling their attention to their blameworthy actions. You should uh, call attention to their blameworthy actions with gentle gentleness and sincerity when there is hope that they will accept what you say right? if you feel that they will accept this nasiha etc then you give them nasiha in a good manner your brothers right? your brothers and your sisters etc and أصدقاء, uh, and and your and your friends so Right. Before entering into such relationships, you must do two things. Right? Before you have a friend, you should do two things. Ahaduhuma, number one, you should check for the presence of the requisite qualities of companionship and friendship in them. You should find people who are worthy of being your friend. Right? Uh, for you should not take as a brother one who is not fit for brotherhood. Prophet Sallallahu is reported to have said, a person's religious life is only as good as his friend. So eat, let each of you consider well who he befriends. Hadith reported by Imam Tirmidhi. If you seek a companion to be your partner in learning and your friend in the matters of religious life and in your worldly life, look for five qualities in them. Number one, right? So these are the sifat of a good brother or a good friend. Number one, al-ula, al-aqal that they should have an aql, right? aql intellect. Right? They should not be dumb. They should not be silly. There is no good in friendship with a foolish person, for such friendship will only end in estrangement and breaking of relations. This person may even harm you while intending to bring you benefit. For an intelligent enemy, ah, look at this, for an intelligent enemy is sometimes better than a foolish friend. Right? The Arabic, right? And then he mentioned some poetry of Ali radiallahu Do not befriend, do not befriend an ignorant person. Let both of you and him beware. For how many an ignorant has brought to ruin a gentle, forbearing man, whom he, when he befriended him, 
A person is measured by the company he keeps, like one pair of shoe placed next to another. Everything is evaluated by comparison to its peer. A heart will reflect the reality of the heart it kept company with. SubhanAllah, Jay, beautiful verses, Jay. وَلَا تَصْحَبْ أَخَ الْجَهْلِ إِيَّاكَ وَإِيَّاهُ إِيَّاكَ وَإِيَّاهُ فَكَمْ مِنْ جَاهِلٍ أَرْدَى حَلِيمًا حِينَ 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 وَخَاهُ يُقَاسُ الْمَرْءُ بِالْمَرْءِ إِذَا مَا هُوَ مَا شَاهُ وَلِلشَّيْءِ مِنَ الشَّيْءِ مَقَايِسُ وأشياء وأشباه وللقلب على القلب دليل حين يلقاه نمبر 2 حسن الخلق good character do not be, be, do not be friends with a person of bad character that is somebody who cannot restrain his anger or control his desire just gets angry out of the blue etc for nothing or he cannot control his desire his shahwa jayid uh, whatever the desire might be Al-Qama uh, Al-Utaridi, may Allah have mercy upon him, summarized the traits of good character in counsel advice that he gave to his son when he was near his death. He said, oh my son, if you wish to befriend somebody, take as your friend a person who, if you serve him, he protects and preserves you. If you spend time with him, he beautifies you by his company. And if you are in financial need, he provides for you. Take care of your friend, one who, if you extend your head towards something good, he assists you in it. And if he sees you do something good, he appreciates and remembers it. And if he sees you doing something bad, he stops you from doing it. Take as your friend, one who, when you say something, he believes you. When you attempt something, he accepts your leadership. And if you should dispute about something, he prefers you to himself. Jade, subhanAllah, Jade. إذا أردت أن تصحب إنسانا فاصحب من إذا خدمته صانك وإذا صحبته زانك وإن قاعدت بك مؤنة مؤنة ما نعك اصحب من إذا مددت يدك إلى خير مدها وإن رأى منك حسنة عدها وإن رأى منك سيئة سدها اصحب من إذا قلت صدقك وإذا حاولت أمرا أمرك أمرا أمرك وإن تنازعت وإن تنازعت تنازعتما في شيء آثرك وقد قال علي رضي الله تعالى عنه uh, Rajazan and Ali radiallahu ta'ala stated in lines of poetry, Verily your true brother is he who is really with you, who will harm himself in order to benefit you. And when the troubles of the time break you, he will shatter himself to pieces in order to gather you together. SubhanAllah. Inna akhaq al-haq man kana ma'ak wa man yadurru nafsahu lianfa'ak وَمَنْ إِذَا رَيْبُ الزَّمَانِ صَدَّعَكْ شَتَّتَ فِيهِ شَمْلَهُ لِيَجْمَعَكْ Beautiful lines of poetry, subhanAllah, right? Number three, الصَّلَاحُ That this uh, friend of yours, he should be upright. Do not, brief, do not befriend a fasik who persists in committing major transgressions be, uh, because somebody who fears Allah will not, somebody who, because somebody who fears Allah will not persist in committing major transgressions. As for somebody who doesn't fear Allah, the Most High, you cannot be safe from his danger. He doesn't fear Allah. What about yourself? Indeed, such a person changes as his objectives change. Allah, the Mighty and Majestic, said uh, to his Prophet, وسلم, do not obey someone whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance, uh, who follows his inclinations, whose case has gone beyond all bounds wala tuti' man aghfalna qalbahu an dhikrina wa attaba'a hawa huwa kana amruhu furuta fahdhar suhbat al-fasik and so beware of befriending a wrongdoer for witnessing wrongdoers and their transgressions on a regular basis will remove from your heart all sense of the enormity of that sin and it will make it seem insignificant in your heart right so being in the company of these people who are doing wrong all the time you might not do it but the gravity of that sin will decrease in your heart and you will become insignificant. Like, for example, the crime of backbiting has become acceptable to people's hearts 
Why? Because it's so common and it's taken lightly. If people were to see a gold ring or a silk garment being worn by a religious jurist, they will strongly disapprove of it. Yet backbiting is much more serious offense than that. Shayid, subhanAllah. Number, th number four, absence of greed. Hirs, that this person shouldn't be somebody who is greedy. Do not befriend a person who is greedy for, his, uh, for this world. A friendship with somebody who is greedy for this world is a lethal poison. For human nature is designed to imitate and follow by example. Indeed, one person's nature may take uh, from another without even one realizing that you might, you know, his, his attitude, his behavior brushes upon you. So keeping company with one who is fervently attached to this world increases your greed for this world. While being with somebody who has renounced this world will encourage you to also renounce this world. Number five, honesty, a sidq. Do not befriend a liar, for you will always face deception from him. He is like a mirage. He makes what is far seem near to you and what is near seem far. You may not find all of these five qualities existing together uh, in those who are resident in the religious colleges. Look what he says, subhanAllah. He says, maybe you won't find somebody who has all of these qualities in the madrasas. You, you won't find it in the madrasas. Maybe you won't find this in the khankas and in the masajid, etc. So if you don't find these five qualities in, in, in the person, then you've left with two choices. Either opt for isolation. Imam Ghazali, Jahid. Either you should opt for isolation and solitude in which you will find peace and safety or keep your interaction with your friends proportionate to the level of these qualities within them. So they have some amount of khair in them. So just keep your relationship with them in accordance to the, the amount of good that they have. They don't have full, so you don't be full with them. This is accomplished by realizing that uh, the, your brothers uh, are of three types. Try it. وَذَلِكَ بِأَن تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْإِخْوَةِ ثَلَاثَةٌ That your brothers are of three types. A brother for the sake of your hereafter, seek from him only support in religious practices. A brother for the sake of your worldly life, seek from him nothing beyond good character. A brother who is simply agreeable company, right? seek from him nothing beyond keeping safe from his wickedness and his evil. They are... He mentions again that there are three kinds of people. The first group is like nourishment. One cannot exist without them. Second one is like medicine. One needs it from time to time. And the third is like an illness. Third group of people, they are like an illness. It is never needed at all. Yet the servant may be afflicted by it. Such people provide neither benefit nor agreeable company. What must simply be diplomatic with them until one is relieved of them. Nevertheless, observing such a person, observing such a person may bring some great benefit if Allah gives you the ability to see it. If you see within these people the ills and the evils and the vices in them, and so you avoid it. Jay, you take a lesson from them. You see in his vices and his low states what you find repugnant, and so you avoid these. Indeed, the smart one is one who takes a warning from others, and the believer is the mirror of his fellow believer. It was said to Isa alayhi salam that uh, who, refined, uh, who refined your character, O Isa? He replied, no one refined my character. Rather, I saw the poor behavior, the bad behavior of the jahil, and so I avoided it. I learned from, I saw the jahil, and so I don't want to be a jahil. I saw the one who is rude, and I didn't want to be like that. I saw the munafiq, and I didn't want to be like that, right? So I took lesson from the character of others. For if people were to avoid in themselves what they find reprehensible in others, their characters will be refined without any need of a guide. Jayid. Now he mentions the second duty. So he mentions, so if you couldn't find a friend like this, etc., etc., then you need to do two things. And uh, he says, uh, the first one, that uh, maybe you take uh, isolation and uzla, etc. And then he talks about uh, the second duty. Ah. 
So the first duty, Jaid, he discussed all of these matters. Uh, the first duty, also take note, something that the scholars mentioned with regards to Imam Ghazali, that his books, uh, like, like, like books of today, Jaid, uh like you know we've got a chapter here we've got a subject page this is what i will be discussing there's four uh, classes of this matter this is divided into two sections so imam ghazali is very uh, organized very organized in his work straight so if uh, we see on page number 135 he said that your brothers and your friends there are two duties with regards to them and so he spoke about the first one and now he's done with the first one he says with regards to the first duty that uh, uh, you should check for those five qualities. And then he went through the five qualities and then he spoke about what if they don't have those qualities, etc. and he discussed those matters. Now he's going to talk about the second quality. Uh, to respect and fulfill the rights of companionship. Once you enter into a relationship, so you found the right friend, etc., and friendship is established between you and your companion, you are responsible for fulfilling the duties demanded by that bond of friendship and fulfilling them. There are certain rules of conduct. Prophet said, the likeness of two brothers is that of two hands, that one washes the other. Uh, Obviously, we said with regards to the hadith, etc., take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ once entered a thick uh, garden full of trees and he picked up two uh, tooth sticks, one bent and the other straight. And with him was uh, his companions. The Prophet ﷺ gave the straight twig to him, keeping the bent one for himself. The companion said, Ya Rasulullah, you are more deserving of the straight one. And uh, so he ﷺ said, no one spends time in the company of a friend, even for a short time in the day without being questioned. Uh, about his companionship regarding whether he fulfilled the rights of Allah with regards to this companionship. Jade. So he's giving like an example that supposedly the Prophet ﷺ gave to that companion, the straight one, right? Because the Prophet ﷺ is fulfilling the rights of a friend, giving preference to the friend over himself. Uh, the Messenger ﷺ also said, no two friends share each other's com company except that the kinder and the more caring of the two towards the other is more beloved to Allah, the mighty and the majestic. The etiquette of friendship. The etiquette of friendship uh, is uh, to give your friend preference in your wealth or if you cannot do, do this, to give freely out of your surplus wealth when he is in need. To provide swift assistance. Right? So he states, وَالْإِثَارْ بِالْمَالِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ هَذَا فَالْيَبْذُ الْفَضْلَ so the first one he says that when it comes to friendship you should give freely to your friend right you can't do that then at least when he is in need what you have of excess you give to him and uh, to provide swift assistance when he is in need in person and without his having to request you for that assistance, right? To keep his secrets, to conceal his faults, not to pass on people's criticism of him that would upset him. To pass on, but you should pass on the people's praise of him that would please him. To pay full attention when he speaks to you, not to pick apart his words in argumentation. To call him by the best names that he likes, not to tease him and mock him and ridicule him. To praise him for what uh, you know of his praiseworthy traits. To thank him for the favors that he does for you. To defend him in his absence from all infringements upon his honor as you would defend yourself. To give him advice with gentleness and by subtle hints if uh, he needs it. To pardon his slips and his errors. Not to uh, rebuke him and to censure him. To pray for him in the ritual, in the ritual prayer, in your salah, you should make dua for him. Uh, during his life and after his death, to remain loyal to his family and relatives after his death, to choose to make things easy for him by not burdening him with any of your own needs, <clears throat> so as to keep his heart free from your concerns, to express joy at all the happy occasions in his life and sadness at all the calamities that afflict him. SubhanAllah, Jaid. Allah grant us friends like this, Jaid. Right? To be in your to be in your innermost heart just as you appear outwardly, so that uh, you are truly sincere in your love for him in private and in public, to be the one who initiates the greeting of salam when you meet him, to make room for him to sit down in a gathering, 
to come out of the house to welcome him. I go out of your house when he comes to visit and welcome him, to see him off when he leaves. These here now, you know, you're going to ask, oh, where's the, where's the hadith about this matter here? Where's the specific? These are what you call from the, you know, like, like the etiquettes of Al Islam, Jade. The civilization of Islam was very high civilization, Jade. You find like the posh people, Jade, they go to etiquette school, etiquette school, Jade, finishing school. This is uh, that type of etiquette, Jade. Uh, to make room for him, uh, to sit in a gathering, to come out of the house, to welcome him, to see him off when he leaves, to keep quiet when he is talking until he finishes, and to refrain from interrupting him. In short, you should treat your friend exactly as you would like to be treated. You can underline that, right? For truly the brotherhood of a person who, who does not love for his brother what he loves for himself is merely hypocrisy. And you will have uh, evil consequences uh, for him, uh, both uh, in this world and in the hereafter. These are the courtesies due to people in general that uh, you do not know. And uh, to those uh, close friends who are your brothers. These are the courtesies. These are the etiquettes that you should have with the general people that he's already covered. And then he discussed the etiquette with your friends and those uh, close to you. Right? Al-ma'arif, acquaintances. The third category is of acquaintances. Be cautious of them. Because you will not encounter antagonism except from people who are acquainted with you. A true friend will help you. And somebody you do not know at all will not trouble you. But all the animosity you will encounter, they will come from your acquaintances who express their friendship only with their tongues. You should therefore limit your acquaintances as much as possible. If you have to socialize with acquaintances in a school, the central mosque, the local mosque, the market, or in your city, you must not belittle any of them. For you don't know, they might be better than you. At the same time, you must not look at them with the eye of reverence because of their position in the world, as this could ruin you. In the sight of Allah, this world, together with everything in it, it is small and insignificant. Whenever your heart regards as great the people of worldliness, you have declined in the sight of Allah the Most High. SubhanAllah, Jade. Whenever in your heart you regard the people of wealth and power and this and that to be high, then in Allah's sight you have, you have declined. Because it's insignificant in the sight of Allah. You must take care not to offer them your religion in order to attain what they have of this world. Sell your deen for their dunya. Don't do that. No one ever does so without being diminished in their eyes and moreover ending up deprived of what they have. Right? Because when you do this, when you sell your deen for their dunya, even in the eyes of the ruler and the rich person, he looks down upon you. These guys, they just want money. They just want money. Right? He looks down upon you and you lose out at the end. If they show you enmity, do not return the enmity, for you will never have the patience to fully, re to fully respond to them. You will end up losing your religion in animosity towards them, and all your difficulties with them, with them will be long and drawn out. It's not worth it. Jay, choose your fights. Choose your battles. Do not relax and let your guard down with them when, uh, when they honor you. And be wary of them when they praise you. Uh, to your face or show affection for you. If you were to look into the reality of the situation, you will find that only one in a hundred of them is really sincere. Do not expect them to treat you the same way in private as they do in public. Do not be surprised if they slander you in your absence. Do not get angry with them because if you are fair and honest, you will find that you act the same way with your friends and your relatives Indeed, even with your teachers and your parents, for you mention about them in their absence what you do not say to their faces. Allah understand. Do not covet their money or their status or hope for their support. The, the person who, is, who has this hirs and he wants, in most cases, fails to get in the end whatever he wanted. And in the present, he is humiliated. At the end of the road, he doesn't get what he wanted. And right now, he's also humiliated for all of that want, want, want before them. Jade, that they say, jump and you ask how high. 
If you ask one of your acquaintances to do something for you and he does it, thank Allah the Most High and thank the person too. If he does not manage to do it, do not rebuke him. No complaint about it, lest enmity develops. Rather be like the believer seeking out excuses for his brother and not like the hypocrite who searches for faults. Straight the Arabic. Be like the brother who seeks excuses for his brother. Don't be like the hypocrite who seeks the faults of his brother. Say perhaps he was unable to do it for some reason which I'm unaware of. Do not admonish any of them unless you first see in him willingness to accept it. Lest he refuse to hear it from you and then he turns against you and becomes an enemy against you. If one of them has made a mistake in some matter and arrogantly refuses to take advice from anyone, do not teach him for they might derive benefit from your knowledge and yet become your enemy because you gave them advice. They might outwardly take that advice but then their hearts are against you except when they have committed an act of disobedience in ignorance, in which case you should remind them of the, of the truth gently without being harsh. If you see that they have gone, if you see that they have done an act of generosity or goodness, thank Allah who has caused them to love you. But if you see something malicious from them, leave them to Allah, mighty and majestic. Seek his protection from their harm. Do not censure them for uh, no say to them, uh, don't uh, you know who I am? Uh, I am so and so, and I am the son of so and so, or I am a very knowledgeable person. Or in the gathering, you know, you 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 like to show that you are more knowledgeable or better, and this and that, etc. Or you speak about, mashallah, my son this, and my daughter this, and my wife this, and my family this, and we went here and we did this, etc., etc. Right? Allah understand. This is the speech of fools, and the most foolish person is the one who deems himself upright and he praises himself. You should know that Allah the Mighty and Majestic would not give them power over you except because of some sin that you committed in the past. So seek Allah's forgiveness for your sin and realize that it is a punishment for you from Allah. If they belittle you or they harm you, etc., etc. This is because of some of your sins. That's what Imam Ghazali is stating. Be amongst them as one who hears the true things uh, they say and turns a deaf ear to their falsehoods. One who speaks about their good qualities and remains silent about their shortcomings. Be wary of associating. Uh, now he well, comes back to the scholars. Right? He comes back to the, the scholars. He says, beware of associating with the pseudo jurists of your time, the fuqaha, the jurists, especially those who busy themselves with the differences of opinion and arguing and debating, etc. For they will just be waiting for a disastrous turn of fortune to strike you out of envy, out of hasad. They will make conclusive judgments about you based on negative suspicion. They're having su'azan about you and will wink at one another about you behind your back. If you, he's talking about the ulama, he's talking about the ulama. If you keep their company, uh, they take account uh, of your every slip and then they confront you uh, with them all when they are angry during or during a debate. They do not help you when you stumble. They don't forgive you when you slip. They don't cover up any of your faults that you might have. They take you to account over the most trivial, insignificant things and envy you for every blessing, great or small. They incite your brothers against you by tail-bearing, gossiping, and false accusation. If they seemed pleased with you outwardly, they are all flattery. And if they get angry, they reveal a deep inward resentment. They are externally clothed, but within they are wolves. ظاهرهم ثياب وباطنهم ذئاب Allahum stand. This is the conclusion one comes to about them after observing the majority of them. Yeah, subhanAllah. Shayyid Imam Ghazali is saying this is the reality of majority of them. هذا ما طبعت به المشاهدة من أكثرهم إلا من عصمه الله تعالى except the one that Allah has saved from amongst them. Allahum stand. فصحبتهم خسر خسران ومعاشرتهم خذلان. To keep their company is to incur a loss and close association with them leads to utter failure. Allah Allahumstan, Allah Allahumstan, right? This is the judgment of one who affects uh, friendship outwardly. Uh, what then of those 
What then of one who openly shows enmity, enmity to you? If this is the reality of the one who outwardly he shows that he's your friend, but the reality is that he is not. If that's the case, if, if this is the case with him and how you should behave towards him, etc., and run from him, then what do you think about who the one who openly is an enemy towards you? Take the advice of the one who said, be cautious of your enemy once, yet be wary of your friend a thousand times. For it may be that the friend will turn against you and then knows better how to harm you. Jayid, subhanAllah. Ihdar aduwuka marratan wahdar sadiqaka alfa marra falarubbama in qalaba sadiqu fakana a'arafa bil madarra that when the friend turned into an enemy, he knows now how to harm you. He knows your soft spots and your weak spots. It has been similarly said, your enemy may sometimes come from your friends. So do not have too many friends. For most of the diseases that you see have the origins in eating and drinking. Aduwuka min sadiqika mustafadun. فلا تستكثرن من الصحاب فإن الداء أكثر ما تراه يكون من الطعام أو الشراب. جيد. He says that don't have uh, uh, your your enemies sometimes will come from your friends and so don't have too many friends. Just like how, just like how most of the diseases that you find they come via the food and the drink. جيد. The food and the drink. Most of the diseases come from food and drink. And so, decrease in your food and drink. And similarly, most of your enemies will, might come from your friends. A long time. وَكُنْ كَمَا قَالَ هِلَالْ إِبْنْ عَلَىٰ الرَّقِّ And uh, he mentions, When I forgave all and harbored no rancor towards any, I relieved myself of the worry of enmity. Indeed, I give good greetings to my enemy upon seeing him. So as to repel evil with salutations, with salam. I display joy in meeting one I despise, as if he has filled my heart with happiness. I am not even safe <coughs> with those I do not know. How then could I be safe with those who affect loving me? People are in illness and the cure is abandoning them. By harshness towards them, the bond of brotherhood is cut. So make peace with people and you will be free and you will be safe from the troubles they cause and be avid to acquire chivalrous traits. Deal with people with good character and be patient as long as you remain with them. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Be you circumspect. Be as some of the sages have said, meet your friend and your enemy with the same face, one of contentment. Neither lowering yourself to them in humiliation, nor looking up at them in awe. Have a dignified bearing without arrogance and show humility without abasement. Take the middle course in all of your matters because both extremes in any matter are blameworthy. Do not look around from side to side with self-conceit, nor constantly glance behind you. Do not stop and talk to every group you come across. And if you do sit down with them, do not sit in a restless manner. Etiquettes. Make sure you avoid clasping your fingers together, playing with your beard or your ring, picking your teeth, uh, putting your finger in your nose, a lot of spitting or clearing your throat, swatting flies from your face or too much of stretching and yawning, whether in front of people, in the ritual prayer or elsewhere. Jai, be, have some etiquette, have some manners. Jai, be muaddab uh, when you are with people, just opening up your mouth and yawning and screaming and passing wind and uh, rude and rough. Jai, rather, let the way you sit be quiet and calm. Let your speech be orderly and thought out properly. Pay proper attention to the good conversation of the one speaking to you without showing exaggerated amazement and do not ask him to repeat himself. Remain silent when people are joking and telling stories. 
Do not speak about how proud you are of your children and your poetry and your mode of expression and your works and your books and other matters which are personal to you. Don't show off. Do not go to great lengths to dress yourself up as a woman does. No, let yourself be unkempt and unruly. Take the middle path like a slave, right? Uh, don't be unkempt like a slave, etc. No, be, mashallah, to such a level like a woman. Avoid wearing too much of kuhl in your eyes or being extravagant in the use of oil. Do not insist upon having your needs met. Do not encourage anyone to commit oppression. Do not inform your spouse or children, let alone anyone else, of the amount of your wealth, Jaid. Why? Uh, for if they consider it to be little, they will be, you will be of little importance to them. Uh, Jade, so if they know that you have a little bit of money, so they don't bother about you, Jade. And if they know that it's a lot, you will never be able to satisfy them. Be strict with them without being harsh. These are the advices of Imam Ghazali. Uh, be strict with them without being harsh. Be lenient with them without being weak. Do not joke around with your male or female servants or, uh, or your dignity will be lost. In arguments with others, guard against your own ignorance and rashness. Consider well your points before you make them. Do not uh, uh, gesticulate too much, too many movements, etc. Right? Uh, keep turning, uh, don't keep turning around to look at those behind you or fall to your knees. Speak only when your anger has abated. If the ruler tries to befriend you, if the ruler tries to befriend you and uh, being close to you, be with him as you would the sharp edge of a spearhead. Jaid, be careful. Be very, very careful. وَإِذَا قَرَّبَكَ السُّطَانِ فَكُنْ مِنْهُ عَلَى مِثْلِ حَدِّ السِّنَانِ Beware of the fair weather friend, for he is the worst of enemies. Uh, and do not value your wealth more than you value your honor. Your honor is more important than your wealth. The amount, this amount of advice, right? So Imam Ghazali states, this amount of advice should be enough for you, dear young one. At the beginning of the path of guidance, Bidayatul Hidaya. Fahad al Qadru ya Fata Yakfika fi Bidayatil Hidaya. Fajarri biha nafsak fa innaha thalatha tu aksamin. Kismun fi adai ta'at wa kismun fi turkil maasi wa kismun fi mukhalatatil khalk. That uh, this uh, three sections, the first one with regards to obedience, the second one staying away from sin, and the third one, how to behave with the creation. Taken together, these three elements fully encompass the servant's interaction with the creator and his creation. If you see it relevant to you, and you find your heart inclining towards it and desiring to act upon it, whatever was mentioned, then know that you are a servant whose heart Allah has illuminated with true faith and whose breast has been expanded to accept it. Alhamdulillah. And be absolutely certain that this beginning has an end and behind it are spiritual secrets and depths of understanding, types of knowledge and unveilings. We have explained these matters in Ihya Ulumuddin, so make an effort to study it. If, on the other hand, you find that your nafs, yourself, considers these tasks in this book, etc., too burdensome and regards this kind of knowledge to be too much of trouble, asking you how, and it's asking you, how will this type of knowledge benefit you? And your nafs is asking you, how will this type of knowledge in this book, etc., benefit you in the gathering of the scholars? And how will it cause you to excel amongst your peers and your colleagues? How will it raise your status in the meeting of the leaders and the ministers? How will it afford you connections with noteworthy figures, higher earnings and money and position and rank in endowments or in the legal courts, your nafs is asking, how, how is all of this here going to get you that? If that's the case, know then 
that shaitan has misguided you and caused you to forget your destiny, your end, which is to return to Allah and your final abode in the hereafter. So what you should do is you should find a shaitan like yourself to teach you what you think will bring you to your goal. So you should find another shaitan like yourself who will teach you all of these things that you, you, you want. You want the position and the fame and you want to compete with this one and that one, etc. And know with certainty that any dominion that uh, uh, any dominion you may have in your immediate locality, let alone in your own town or country, will never be without troubles. Moreover, in exchange, you will lose the everlasting dominion and place and position and eternal bliss in the proximity of Allah Rabbul Alameen. You will lose all of that. He is enough for us. And he is enough for us, the best of uh, patrons. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. May Allah continue to send blessings and abundant peace upon our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa his family and his companions until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to illuminate the qabr of Imam Ghazali rahimahullah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to record our sitting, our learning, our studying, our going through this text here in our scales of good deeds. This is a text in reality that one should revise every now and then. Many of the scholars, they would say that this text here, you know, you should revise it uh, maybe every second month, every third month, once a year, etc. Very simple, easy text. You also have the audio book of this text in Arabic available on YouTube. Now, alhamdulillah, the English is also available here. We've gone through it in five halaqat. Five halaqat, Jayid. We've completed تعالى, the entire text. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to recall God, I was sitting here in our scales of good deeds. We ask Allah to bless us and keep us blessed. We are, I mean, Imam Ghazali, as he said, this is Bidayatul Hidayah. Bidayatul Hidayah. Jaid, Allah Musta'an. If this is the Bidayah, how far are we, Jaid? Allah Musta'an, Allah Musta'an, Jaid. Look at the qualities he gave there with regards to a friend, Jaid. Forget the friend. What about our sons? What qualities of these do we have, Jaid? Allah, how dignified are we in our gatherings and in our alaqat and in our relationships with people, etc. Jaid, when he talked about uh, uh, having that khalwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are so busy, we will spend hours on end on social media and the internet and watching this and doing that, etc., etc. How much of Quran will we read a day, Jaid? How many of us have read any Quran today? Allah, Mustaan, Jaid. Uh, and especially, as you can see, Imam Ghazali, part of his project towards the end of his life was focused on the ulama, focused on the du'at, focused on the fuqaha and the jurists, etc. Knocking them and whooping them, Jayid, because he's one, been there, done that, etc., etc. Jayid, Allah musta'an, Allah musta'an. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins out of his majesty, and he is ghafar, and he is ghafoor, and he is tawab. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and keep us blessed and grant us the best in this world and in the hereafter. Resurrect us in the company of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make us from amongst the maqbuli that some action of us, etc. for it to be accepted. And so, innama yataqabbalullah min al-muttaqeen that we ask Allah to make us from amongst those. Hada, hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka al-abdihi wa rasulihi nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Jazakum Allah khairan. Barakallahu fikum. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته